Google recently published a paper in Nature where they announced a new AI weather prediction model called GenCast, which is an absolute breakthrough. When tasked to create a 15-day forecast against traditional models, GenCast was 97.2% more accurate, and that's not even the crazy part, because whereas traditional models took days to come up with their prediction, GenCast did it in only eight minutes. So traditional weather models use what's known as numerical weather forecasting. And what this basically means is they take the initial weather conditions, they feed them into supercomputers, and they let them run for days to create a single deterministic prediction. For those that are familiar with chaos theory or the butterfly effect, you might know that the weather is a chaos system. And what this means is that a very small change in the initial condition will result in a drastically different output in the final result. So in order to accommodate for this variance, traditional forecasters will go back and change an initial condition ever so slightly. For example, they might change the temperature by 0.01 or the wind speed or the humidity and then create another deterministic forecast, which also takes days. And then they'll go back and then tweak the variables ever so slightly and then run this again and again. And then after 51 times, they'll go back and assemble these into what's known as an ensemble forecast or ENS. Now, GenCast works fundamentally different by taking a probabilistic approach. So Google took 40 years of historic weather data with over 80 variables like temperature, humidity, pressure, different altitudes, and then they fed it into a diffusion model. Now, let's take some time to understand what a diffusion model actually is because it is not the same as a large language model or chat GPT. Diffusion models are actually used for generating images in things like DALI or Midjourney. So very quickly, the way they work is they get trained on introducing an image and then progressively adding more noise to that image, like pixelation or TV static for those that remember. And each progressive step adds more and more noise up until the entire image consists of nothing but noise. And when it's time to produce images, they actually start with the noise and then they slowly add detail progressively up until you get the entire image in its finality. For example, when you use Midjourney, you might notice that your initial prompt starts out as a giant blur. And then as time passes, it progressively gets sharper and more detailed until you get the final image that you desire. A good analogy is that a sculptor first starts out with a marble block and they slowly chip away at all the noise until the statue emerges from within the block. So using this diffusion model, GenCast was not only able to beat traditional numeric weather prediction models by 97.2% in 15-day forecasts, but it actually beat them 99.8% in 36 hours and beyond. And there's another caveat to this, which is not only the accuracy rate or the speed, but it did so on a single TPU chip. So TPUs are Google's proprietary hardware chips, similar to GPUs, but specifically optimized for AI. Now the use cases are pretty obvious because our world is dependent on advanced weather forecasting. From the aviation industry needing to predict wind patterns to farmers needing to predict rainfall or even renewable energy with the ability to plan where to place wind farms. But where GenCast truly shines is in its ability to predict extreme weather events like hurricanes, cyclones, heat waves, or extreme winds. The paper states that it's able to predict cyclones days in advance, and they actually gave it historical data of the 2019 typhoon in Japan, Hagibis, I think it's pronounced, which was one of the costliest ones that year, and it was actually able to predict landfall seven days in advance. So it goes without saying that this is an absolute game changer when it comes to emergency preparedness and evacuation, and this results in more than twice the economic value compared to traditional weather prediction models. So in its current state, GenCast has several downsides, and the first one is resolution. Its current resolution is 0.25 degrees as opposed to the 0.1 degrees in traditional weather models. Next up is the fact that it can't assimilate real-time data or predict cloud coverage. It's also pretty bad at predicting black swan events or those one in a thousand year events because the historical data is only from 40 years. So obviously fat tail distribution events are kind of hard to predict. Now, personally, I'm really impressed, but also surprised because over the last couple of years, what keeps happening over and over again is we see an AI model being repurposed for other things that it wasn't really intended for, but somehow miraculously seems to work. So LLMs are language models, but they're also great for drug discovery and even things like 3D meshes and topology. Diffusion models were created for generating images, but are somehow great at predicting the weather and even analyzing medical images like x-rays and MRIs. So for me, the most curious thing is what's next? What other uses for these AI models are we going to find that we simply don't know today?
Let me know what you think down below. And until next time.